They couldn't beat that team. Well, they can't beat anybody because they might be the worst team in football. They might be. Because you can look at Cincinnati that won a game and they played you know, pretty hard against Cleveland, lost the contest. Miami certainly is playing better. Washington is certainly playing better. I mean, the Giants are going to be in the mix as the worst team in football. They've lost nine in a row for the first time since 1976. I did an informal poll. I think we've got like a half a dozen people on the floor that were alive in 1976. I mean, they are just a bad football team, all right? I thought Eli played well. I don't think Eli embarrassed himself, but nobody is saving this team. They've got a bunch of kids playing, and they don't have the coaches to work through it. They are a poorly coached football team, period, on both sides of the ball. Because coaches will find a way. You know what? Give Peterson credit. He found a way, right? His team's a mess. Wasn't They're pretty. down two touchdowns. Midway was late in the second quarter, and he coached up. When was the last time the Giants were coached up? The exact opposite happens with the Giants. They play well to start the game. No adjustments are made. The coach on the other sidelines figures them out, and they've got no answer. Jordan Ronan, who covers the Giants for us, um, at 1027 this morning, tweeted out, expectations around the league are that Shermer won't survive this mess and GM Dave Gettleman is also in trouble. Quite frankly. Then he went on to say, Pat Shermer seemed resigned to his fate Monday for first time. Asked if he expects to finish out season. He replied, yeah, I do. We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Then Shermer cracked a rare joke about being asked the tough questions. He has not done a great job. I'm sorry, he has not. And um, there doesn't seem to be an overabundance of talent. Now, here's the biggest fear for me. And I'm not saying this to be provocative. And I'm not saying this uh, to be mean-spirited. So, last year, or two drafts ago, Dave Gettleman took Saquon Barkley and said he's a gold jacket guy, which means he's going to end up in, in Canton, in the Hall of Fame. This might be a, a dirty little secret that nobody even wants to address because if it's true, then the Giants are in trouble. Maybe Saquon's not that great. Because if mm. he's healthy, there are yards out there that he's not picking up. A kid named Boston shredded the Giants. Shredded them. First name Boston. Yeah. They also have a kid on the team with the first name Dallas. I mean, I, I, was, I, was I watching a map or a football game? It, it, it's amazing to me. Uh, I, and you, you were on this from the very beginning, not that he was a bad player, that strategically it wasn't a great pick to pick a running back with the second pick. Right. And the kid is everything you want him to be. He's not going to go bowling when he has the flu. We'll talk about that later. Yes. But the, he's just not picking up huge chunks of yardage. He gained one yard receiving yesterday with a quarterback who loves to dump the ball off when there's pressure. What's going on with Saquon Barkley? It can't be the high ankle sprain because sometimes he shows strength and speed and cutting. Other times he just runs into a wall. Yeah, I, I, maybe he's lost confidence because of the injury. Michael, you don't have time unless you're on the level of Barry Sanders. And even Barry sometimes got caught doing this. You can't just patiently wait in the backfield for your hole. Juke and jive and dance around and then eventually burst through the hole and score a touchdown. Sometimes you've got to put your head down and drive through the hole. Sometimes you've got to create some things, and I don't see it. I, I, just, I saw it last year. So is it because of the high ankle sprain? Well, that's obviously a theory. Or is it the team's figured him out? All right, now there's a book on him, and now we, we know how to defend him because he is a shell of what he was last year. So not only did I believe it was a bad pick strategically, how bad would the pick look if he turns out not to be a gold jacket guy? I didn't want to pick him even if he was, because I don't think the running back position is as impactful as a quarterback position is. But if he turns out to be ordinary, that's a second overall pick, Michael. I get I, 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 I It's a huge problem. And, you know, we're having this discussion off the air. Uh, in the back office, and, you know, we, we were saying how Gettleman doesn't seem like he's done a great job. Now, Slayton could be a find. He has seven touchdowns recently, as much as anybody in the NFL, as many as anybody in the NFL. But if you take a look at last year's draft, not the most recent one, the, the year before. Nothing extraordinary. Nothing. There's nothing extraordinary. So somebody said, well, I mean, if Daniel Jones turns out, Jones turns out to be great, then he did his... No, 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 no. He lucked into that. He didn't know Daniel Jones was going to be great when he skipped over Sam Darnold and other quarterbacks well, that's when, he, true. when he took Saquon Barkley. I don't. His grand plan wasn't to get Daniel Jones. 
It turned out I, I wouldn't year. think so. Not in my my theory again is they took Barkley because they wanted the immediate hit because they were trying to squeeze more out of Eli. That didn't work. They shifted and took the best quarterback they believed at that point. So I don't think it was a statement of we know Jones is coming. No, they, they just shifted gears. If Darnold was available the same year Jones was, they would have taken Sam Darnold. That's my opinion. But oh, you really believe that? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I think they would have taken the best quarterback on the board well, the next I, year. Maybe it would be Baker Mayfield, whatever the pick would be. be. I don't know if Darnold would have been there at six, mm -hmm. but I think You're saying, I, I still be, I don't buy into the theory they liked Barkley better than the quarterbacks. They liked Barkley because they felt like they had a quarterback. They weren't going to bring a quarterback in because Barkley was going to rejuvenate Eli's career. They were going to make a run for a championship in 2017 or in 2018, and then in 2019, Eli's last contract, they were going to try for, to go for it again. They figured they had a quarterback for the next two years. I, then I they were wrong, and then they had to shift gears, and they went to Jones. I, I think evidence suggests that Don's right at this point. I think it's a tough argument to make. Why else would you Why else would you have gone in on Barkley? Yes, he's a, he's a well, we think he's a great, great talent, although I, I think he's not right this year. I don't think this is a, I don't think this is a, a I think situation. you're right, too. I don't, I, don't, I don't think this is a situation where it turns out Saquon's not special. I, I think we saw who Saquon is. I think he's not right. I think they brought him back too quickly. I, I, would, I would shut him down for the year. I've been saying that for, what, three weeks I've been saying yeah, shut but, him down? but when you watch him, let, let's say we didn't know he had a high ankle sprain earlier in the year. Would you think that he's, he's hobbled? No. no, but I think that's because he's a freak. I think Saquon is such a good athlete. Physically, he is so ridiculous. We've been around him. Yeah. His lower body is unlike anything you've ever seen in an athlete before. It, it's, he's insane. I think he's so strong that you don't notice that he's hurt. He, he's not hobbled. He's just not that good. He's just not that good. But he can still get around because he's a freak. But he's not right. I, I don't then, believe then, it's then a shame on the Giants. Him. Why is he playing then? I don't know. Why was, why was Daniel Jones being talked about Saturday about being ready soon? I, I think that's all gamesmanship. But I thought it was game. Listen, when we all saw Saquon get hurt in that game against Tampa, right. we thought he might have been out for the year. That's how bad the injury looked. Right. He was back on the field in three weeks. So then you bring him back. All right. He's not 100%. You continue to lose. And you're losing. Right. right. And now you've lost nine straight games. I mean, it looks like the writing's on the wall now. Why isn't somebody in the organization, John Maris, saying, listen, I, I see no reason he's got to play the last three games. We're going to need a fresh guy. Plus, here's the shame of the whole thing. And one of the reasons I didn't want to take a running back in the first place. These guys have a six, seven-year window. Next year's year three. Right? So, so two years you've wasted of this special talent. First doing nothing, year, doing nothing. Because you misjudge the talent on the team. And the second year, he gets hurt. And that's the thing. You want to shut him down now. You don't want to waste any of year three. You want him to be great for year three, but they cannot be watching him and believing Saquon's fine. Isn't it, isn't it weird, though? Uh, nobody expects the Giants to be great next year because there's so much work to be done. And if they do fire Gettleman and Shermer, then you're starting a program from the ground up again. <laughs> And if, 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 if the shelf life of a running back is six, seven years, you've wasted half of his career. Half of now, his career for what? Let's, we hope the shelf life's a little longer, but that's what it can be on the low end. Let's turn our attention back to Gettleman, because if you agree, Peter, I don't know if Michael's completely on board, but if you agree that the drafting of Saquon Barkley was to win now, right, then the hiring of Pat Shermer was to win now, <coughs> because they saw what Shermer did with Case Keenum in Minnesota, and figured, we want him to do that with Eli. We'll draft Saquon Barkley, and we're going to go for it. Well, just like David Fisdale, he didn't do his job. Fisdale was hired to bring free agents in. He didn't. Shermer was hired to rejuvenate Eli's career. He didn't. So you can make the case now that they brought the wrong guy in. He was there to try to salvage Eli and win in 2018. Once he didn't do that, is he now the right guy for the job? And when you look at what Keenum has done, did he really do anything? Did Keenum just happen to have a freak year, take advantage of a freak play against the Saints, and exaggerate Shermer's ability to be a quarterback whisperer? So I'll give Gettleman a little bit of a pass, and I know I'm guilty of doing this, but if everything, the hiring of the coach and the drafting of Saquon was to win now, then is it fair to judge those decisions when they've shifted gears in a different direction?